Howdy folks, Spencer here, and on the cryptic stream that happened on March 19th where they talked about the future content plans for the next couple of months, which I covered in my video yesterday, they had mentioned that there was going to be a new MUDs bundle dropping here on PC at the end of March of 2024, and it would include two popular ship picks inside, and they were not lying. So today I want to break down the MUDs bundle choice pack of Dread Through the Ages, also what I'm referring to as the Cryptic Wants Your Money MUDS Bundle. This is by far one of the best MUDS Bundles they have put into the game so far. It is immediately an S tier bundle to me, and I imagine many of you are going to be running out to pick this thing up right away. So I'm going to be taking a look at each part of it here in this video. As always, chapters to each topic will be listed down below. Okay, first up, let's go over the basics here. This bundle should be dropping on PC on March 28th, and for those of you on console, it'll follow one to two months later. And for the cost here, I'm just gonna look at the cost during 50% sale. The pick three choice pack will be 14,750 Zen, and the mega bundle, given that this bundle only has seven items in it, should be 25,000 Zen. And there will also be a 75% sale on the non-bundle items in the MUD store for a couple days around the, the launch of this bundle, so if you have any of the other MUD stuff you're looking to pick up, it'll be a good time to do so. Now, I want to take a look at the items that this bundle has that make it so impressive to me. I'm going to just go over a quick overview of the contents first, and then I'm going to take a closer look at everything one by one. So let's start off here with the ship options, because these are, of course, the most impressive. And the first ship selection here is the TOS Dreadnought Starship Pack. This contains three ships, the most notable of which is the Atlas Prototype Dreadnought Cruiser. This is the ship that has the DPRM console. So this MUDS bundle is how you can get the DPRM console on account-wide unlock. But that's not all. This selection also includes the D9 Dreadnought and the Thry, because they all drop from that same TOS Dreadnought Starship pack, meaning that if you get the selection, not only are you getting the DPRM, you're also getting two of the other consoles in the DPRM console set. These consoles aren't necessarily meta, aside from the, the DPRM, but if you're looking to, to gear up some alts, having the, the two or three piece on might be beneficial to you. And if you have the 10th Anniversary Bundle, the Legendary NX from that has the fourth console in the DPRM console set. So if you have this and the 10th Bundle, then you have that entire console set on account-wide unlock. Again, not all of the consoles are a must-have for every character, but they are good when working on a new alt or just leveling one up. So a very strong selection there. Um, the DPRM, of course is a console that people have been going crazy about for a very long time. If you're a Romulan or Klingon player, you've been fortunate uh, to have access to some cheaper ones via the player exchange, via console packs, but even then people are paying like six to 700 million on, on Romulan or KDF characters to get this console. And on Fed players, you always had to pick up the Atlas, which meant that this console would easily cost you a billion plus CC. So having this on account wide unlock through the Smuds bundle, is going to be a huge, huge, huge deal for many of you. And the second ship selection just keeps making it better. The 26th Century Heavy Dreadnought Pack. This is a bunch of promo ships. It is specifically the Enterprise J and the Klingon and Romulan versions of it. So if you're a fan of the Enterprise J, the Durgath and the Valkus, you like how big they are, you like how fun they are to fly, well, now you can get them on account wide unlock. They are not necessarily the best ships from a meta point of view, but they are incredibly fun to fly. They're still very capable. They're they're four four cruisers that have two hangar bays. The Durgath and Valkus do also have a cloak. It's just some some really fun ships to fly. They're some of the biggest in the game. I know many of you are going to be very happy to have those on account wide unlock. So, just these two top selections here. That's already six ships that you're getting on account wide unlock with this. So pretty, pretty big deal there, especially given that most of these ships on their own would easily cost you like a hundred bucks to, to get per character via traditional methods. So very strong options there. The third ship here is the Marian Command Science Dreadnought. This one's not going to be as popular. Um, for me, 
this is a ship that I was hoping to have in the Muds bundle, so I'm glad to see it here. It's really good for some high-end Psy Torp stuff, but most of you don't care about that. And for most of you, if you're just going for the pick three choice pack, this is going to be the easiest ship for you to skip over. And for the consumables here, you've got two T6 coupons, 50 master keys, which again, will be bound to you. There's an Epic Phoenix token. Um, from what I'm hearing, it's saying that there's going to be two. Normally these, these types of bundles would only have one Epic token. So I'm not sure if that's a typo. I'll have it clarified down in a pinned comment to let you guys know if it's one or two Epic tokens and then 10 ultimate tech upgrades. And given that this ship has, or given that this bundle has ships from each faction, there is the cross faction flying unlock included with it. So overall, you know, just looking at the, the overview here, you can probably see why this is such a strong bundle because you're, the TOS Dreadnought Starship pack is getting you the DPRM on account wide unlock. And then the 26th century heavy dreadnought pack there, that Enterprise J is extremely popular. And the Durgath and Valkus are also incredibly fun to, to fly. They're, they're really large ships, like I said. And, you know, if someone's going in, um, what, I, what I see most of you doing is getting like the TOS Dreadnought pack, the 26th pack, and then like two T6 coupons or the Epic token or tokens. I think that's what most of you will probably do. And with that, you're going to be getting a lot of value out of this bundle ship wise. So again, I, I think that this is going to be one of the best selling MUDS bundles so far. The DPRM alone does a lot of uh, heavy lifting for, for this bundle. So uh, with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at each of the individual items. Okay, the first ship we're going to take a look at, or the first set of ships, is the TOS Dreadnought Starship Pack here. Again, this contains the Atlas, the D9, and the Thry. Now, the stats on these ships are pretty much all the same. The, the main difference is the trait and console that they have. Um, so there is also some minor differences with the hull uh, and shield mod and mobility, but those are not really that significant. All of these ships uh, for the Atlas, the D9, and the Thry, they have a Commander Engineer, a Lieutenant Commander TAC with Temporal, a Lieutenant Universal, Lieutenant Engineer with Command, and a Lieutenant Science. So, a bit of a dated setup there, but you can still make it work. And then they have a 5-3 weapon setup. They can equip dual cannons. They do have a hangar bay, three device slots, four TAC consoles, five inch, two Psy. The Atlas and the D9 do have cruiser commands. The, the Thry does not. It's got the Singularity core on it, so it doesn't have access to those. The D9 has a cloak, and the Thry has a battle cloak. So let's take a closer look at these visually. So first up is the Atlas. You guys have probably seen this thing before. Um, and again, the, the main reason that this ship matters so much is because of the DPRM console. Uh, the DPRM console has a clicky on it, so that gives you a large amount of Cat 2 damage, plus a lot of survivability, a lot of uh, regen there for 20 seconds. So very popular for the survivability and the damage that it provides. Most high-end builds that you've seen for, for quite a long time have had this console on them. Some ships have dropped it, but for 99% of builds, the, this console is still very heavily used. The next ship here, or actually the, the Starship trade off the Atlas, um, is Sif Shunt. While this trade is slotted, activating any hull healing while at full hull strength will provide a boost to all power levels for a short time. This effect will stack up to three times. And from what I recall, it's not that significant. Okay. Next up, we have the D9. And here is what that looks like. Again, the, the stats for the Atlas, the D9, and the Thry are basically the same. Um, the console off this I'll go over in a second. The Starship trait is Catastrophic Overload. Jam sensors causes area of effect disable and electrical damage on expiration. So it will just go in, do some electrical damage to foes and disable them for a couple seconds. Again, not really a meta trait, but something you may have fun messing around with. And the console here is Disruption Pulse Emitter. Um, this is an okay, like, budget EPG console. It's not something you're really going to use at a high level. 
but you may have some fun messing around with it at a budget level. And then we have the Thry, and this is what that thing looks like. Very, very funky looking. And with this one, the trade on this is layered shielding. Emergency power to shields and extend shields will grant secondary shielding. Targets gain plus 6,000 secondary shields for 30 seconds. So the value on this is pretty low. Not really that great of a trait. You know, with, with, with the, the ships in this selection here, um, it's really about the consoles on them. It's not necessarily about the ships themselves for for the uh, TOS Dreadnought Starship pack. You can make them work, but there's much better platforms out there. And the console off the Thry there is the secondary shield projector. This is going to give some shield restoration, reduce damage to shields by 5%. It is end to your team. It will give some secondary shielding and periodically um, give hazard and debuff cleanse. So if you're a support focused player, this may be a console worth looking at. But again, I think for the disruption pulse emitter and the secondary shield projector, if you have those on, it's probably just for, for the set bonuses. Typically, when people are running the DPRM, the console that they would pair it with is the Point Defense Bombardment Warhead off of the NX, which again is available through the Legendary NX in the 10th Anniversary Bundle. And for the set here, for these consoles, the two-piece is 33% Cat 1 for Phaser, Disruptor, and Plasma. The three-piece is 50% recharge speed for all consoles in this set, so you can get the DPRM back up a bit faster. And the four-piece will increase the damage buff on the DPRM and give some buffs to the other consoles in that set. So, you know, the running the three and four piece isn't something you typically see, but again, you know, for, for like some alts, that may be a very strong option to, to go with a very accessible option if you have this bundle. So the DPRM is of course the, the big thing here, but having the other consoles, may be useful for some of you also. Next up is the 26th Century Heavy Dreadnought Pack. This is the Enterprise J and the Klingon and Romulan variants. And for this one, I actually happen to have all three of these on various characters. So we're gonna take a look at them visually in game and then we'll look at the stats on the wiki. So let's start off here with the universe or the Enterprise J. This is a pretty big ship. It doesn't handle quite the, the best, but if you put some maneuverability stuff on, you, you can make it move much faster than it looks like it should be able to move. I've, I've seen some people put some like meme builds on the ship where they're flying around faster than most people in escorts. So it's a, it's a fun ship. Uh, again, it's, it's really big, really, really big. So if you like having big ships to, to mess around with, then that's one you may want to consider. And here is the Romulan version, the Valkis. It is also pretty large, as you can see, compared to the other ships above New Rom here. And one of the nice things with this ship is that this is one of the few ships in the game that can use the Romulan drone ships off of the Scimitar, which are some of the best performing hangar pets in the game DPS-wise. So it's a fun platform to mess around with, especially if you're a fan of, of Romulan ships. And this one specifically, it is just ginormous. So... If you like big ships, this 26th century pack is definitely going to be something to look at. And the last ship in the 26th century pack is the Durgath. And this thing just looks really good visually. Again, this this is a ship that I actually used an event campaign uh, pack to, to go and pick up on casual. It's one of my favorite Klingon designs in the game. And definitely a ship that I'm going to enjoy putting on some of my uh, Klingon focused alts. Here's another look at it from a few different angles. Again, really cool visually. And I should mention, um, stats wise, each of the, the three ships in the 26th uh, century heavy dread pack here, they basically have the same stats when it comes to the, the weapons layout, the bridge officer setup. Um, they also all have two hangar bays and being dreadnoughts, they do also have a built-in lance that scales with EPG stuff. So it, it, they're pretty interesting ships to, to play around with. Now let's take a look at the stats of them over on the wiki. Actually over on the spreadsheet. Um, so like I said, they all have the exact same 
uh, bridge officer set up here. So Commander Inge with Temporal, a Lieutenant Commander Universal with Command, a Lieutenant TAC, Lieutenant Engineer, and a Lieutenant Science. So they all have a 4-4 weapon set up. They can all use dual cannons. They all have two hangar bays, three device slots, uh, console-wise, four TAC, four inch, three Psy. The Fed and Klingon variants have the weapon and engine cruiser commands. The Romulan one doesn't. And cloak-wise, the Durgath has just a normal cloak, and the Valkus has a battle cloak. And for the trait and console off these ships, all three of them have the exact same one. So the trait is repair mode. Um, taking damage will grant repair mode. After taking a large amount of damage, you will gain one, one repair mode counter for 120 seconds, and it may occur once every three seconds. Upon you having three of these stacks on you, it will heal you 10,000 hit points every half second for five seconds. It'll give you some resistance, some temp HP. It will disable you for five seconds and remove all repair mode counters and then lock out the ability to generate repair mode counters for another minute and a half. So it, it's something some people have messed around with for like some heavy tank survivability uh, builds, but it's not the most effective trait. And the fact that it disables you for five seconds pretty much has made it a no-go for a lot of people long-term. So it's okay for some niche builds, but for, for general survivability, not a trait that I would use. And the console here um, has a nice interaction with the, the Lance on the ship. So when you use this console, you can basically get the Lance back up faster. You're also giving a power buff to your team and um, you'll give an EPS buff to uh, yourself or the target of the console. So it's, it's an interesting console to use on this ship. Um, it is only usable on this ship, though, on on these three ships. So it, it's it's interesting, but its use case is limited, and it's specifically if you're looking to go in and use the lance more often. Overall, the 26th century ships, you know, they're they're really fun. They're really big ships in the game to fly around. Um, I've had a blast flying each of the three variants around, and I know many of you have as well. If you do happen to uh, pick up the 26th century pack, you know, make sure to check out Trizander's channel. He's a big fan of the Enterprise J and he would love to have more people flying around him with the Enterprise J. And the final ship in this Muds bundle is the Marion Command Science Dreadnought. And this is also a ship that I think some people have referred to as the guitar pick. A bit funky looking there. And for the Marion here, um, let's go over its stats. This has a Commander Science with Command, a Lieutenant Commander Universal, a Lieutenant Commander Engineer with Command, a Lieutenant TAC, and an Ensign Psy. It's got a 4-3 weapon set up, can use dual cannons, it has one hangar bay, three device slots, console-wise, three TAC, four inch, four Psy. Being a science ship, it of course has a secondary deflector, subs, uh, subsystem targeting, and sensor analysis. And given that it is a... 32nd century ship from Discovery. It does also have a 32nd century battle cloak on it. And for, for this ship, th this would be a good platform for uh, doing some Psy Torp stuff or uh, maybe like a Psy Tank. For most of you, I just don't think you're going to care about this ship. But for me, I'm very excited to have it in the bundle. Um, I just had a feeling for, for a while that we were going to see this ship in a MUDS bundle. I've been wanting to pick one up for some high-end Psy Torp stuff, and I'm glad I held off because I would have been a bit annoyed to have burned some Infinity boxes picking this ship up uh, like a week or two back and then having it drop in this MUDS bundle. So I'm glad I waited there. I had a feeling it was going to gonna happen. And for the, the trait here... The Starship trade off of this ship is Scientific Bulwark. When activating a bridge officer ability that increases damage resistance rating, you will get plus 35 control expertise, drain expertise, and EPG skill for 15 seconds, and this can stack up to 15 times. You know, that's not that bad, honestly, for, for some niche science builds. Like, 
when if you can get that up to five stacks, that's 175 control X, strain X, and EPG. So, you know, for a science player, this may not be a bad ship to have on account wide unlock, to be honest. And for the console here, it is reactive radiometric shielding. The passives on this are plus 25% radiation damage, plus 25 radiation damage resistance rating, plus 15% hull regen. And the clicky on it is going to give you a 20 second buff that gives you immunity to radiation damage, plus 200 energy damage resistance rating. And once per half second when receiving energy damage, you will restore hold to yourself and allies equal to the amount of energy damage resisted. Deal radiation damage to foes equal to twice the amount of energy damage resisted, and that will apply to foes and allies within five kilometers of you. So, I've never tried this console out, to be brutally honest with you. Like, this is the, the first time since the, the stats blog of this ship came out that I have looked at this console. I, I think there's probably some applications here. The, the passives on it aren't terrible um, for, for some science stuff. And I imagine you could find a way to benefit from that clicky on a uh, on a really heavy tank type of build. So, you know, for for those of you doing side torp, side tanking, or you know that just want to have some some nice science accessories here, this may not be a bad ship to pick up. And time for my final thoughts here. I think that this is a really strong MUDS bundle. I think the TOS Dreadnought Starship Pack and the 26th Century Dreadnought Pack in here are both incredibly strong options. And again, I've talked about this with prior MUDS bundles, but if there's a selection that says it has multiple ships in it, you do actually get all of the ships listed in that selection. Um, so for example, there's there's been a few MUDS bundles that have had similar ship selections where there's a selection that actually has multiple ships as part of it. Um, for example, the Kelvin's Timeline Starships here from the Into Darkness Muds bundle, that has the Kelvin Connie, the Talaru, and D4X in it, and you can just keep reclaiming the box and get all three of those ships on every character on your account. So you do actually have the ability to go in and pick those three ships up as many times as you want. You can dismiss them like a normal Sea Store ship also, and then just go back and reclaim them from the Mud Store. So you do actually get all three of those ships. Same for the 26th century pack here, meaning that if you pick those two options up, you're getting six ships out of it. If you're going for the pick three choice pack and you're wondering what your third option should be, the Marion would be fine if you're into the Cytorp stuff or the, the science perks that that ship has. Uh, consumable wise, if this is actually two Epic Phoenix tokens and that's not a typo, then I think you go for that. And if it is actually two Epic Phoenix tokens, I foresee some of you going out and picking this choice pack up a few times, probably uh, just going out and getting three selections of the, the Epic Phoenix tokens. Again, that might be a typo though. So don't, don't get too crazy there until we actually see that in game that it is actually two. That again, that that's probably a typo. You guys know how cryptic is. The two T6 coupons is always a strong option. Um, the 50 master keys, those are bound to you. You cannot sell them. So if you're needing Lobby, sure, but I, I think you're better off with the Epic token or the T6 coupons. And for the ultimate tech upgrade, I, I just don't think I would pick that as an option. And I know some of you are not going to be happy with me saying this, but this is one of the few MUDS bundles so far where I think the, the Mega Bundle would be something worth taking a look at if the Mega Bundle does indeed only cost 25,000 Zen. There's only seven items in here. The cross-faction flying unlock is included because of the cross-faction ships here. So if, if that is the case, then I think for, for 25,000 Zen, there, there is the value here, especially if this is actually two Epic tokens, then that that's quite a bit of value. So that's my thoughts. And for me personally, I'm going to go with the three ship selections here, the Marianne, the Ent J pack, and then the, uh, the DPRM pack there that that's the choices I'm going to go with. I'm just going to go with these and ignore the consumables. Personally, I don't have any use for the coupons right now that are bound to me. I don't need the, the keys. Um, I have other ways I can go in and just get keys off the exchange. Um, the Epic tokens, I have no use for them. And the ultimate tech upgrades, again, I just don't have any use for them personally. So 
The three ship selections is what I'm going to go with, and I am absolutely picking this pack up day one. And before I go, um, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the, the bundle here. Are you going to pick it up? And if so, what ships are you going to pick up? And I want to remind you guys that if you're going to be picking up Zen through Epic to, to pick this bundle up, they do currently have 10% cash back going on. So if you do pick up any Zen over there, you're going to get 10% cash back. And when you're at checkout over there, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use creator tag casual sab at checkout. I do financially benefit from that and the funds from that help me afford mods bundles like this. So if you pick up Zen, I'd greatly appreciate you putting that creator tag in if you're going through the Epic Game Store. But that's going to be it for today. As always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. I will see you guys around.